we want to look at what you actually finished up finding out that you believed from your childhood in terms of so we're not now talking about what you hope you believe from your childhood but what actual beliefs came out of your childhood so these are the kinds of feelings that you have now that oftentimes you don't want to own up to and you oftentimes don't want to accept and what we want to do is find them and feel feel about them so so what are some of those beliefs that you found from your childhood if we carolyn if we go there first if i am not strong i will not survive okay so so can we say that you needed strength but what did you define strength to be what what do you mean by strong i meant um I meant if I don't do what it takes to survive in my environment, whatever that may be. So would you view crying as strength? Yeah, no, not okay. at all. Okay, so, so, that, so what, does, what does strong mean? Strong mean? means powering through something or so, so keeping up with the pack, basically. So could you say no emotion is strength? Yeah. We, yeah. What else? Um... Like, I feel like that keeping up with the pack, like if my parents were doing something and they had a certain emotion, I had to buy in and be doing that same thing or else I'd be left behind. So, so agree with the pack, shall we uh -huh. go? With the pack, in this case, it's the family pack, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. So in other words, if you don't agree with the family, you're the odd one out. Definitely. And, and it's never good to be the odd one out. <laughs> Yes. Never a good thing, right? Yeah. What else do you, you define strength to be? Uh, intellectual strength. So mind over feelings? Could that yes, be? Definitely. Good. And physical strength too. Okay, so almost it's almost a feeling, isn't it, that men, you've got to be like a man almost. Yeah. Because men generally have more physical strength than women. It, it, it's almost like a competitive nature. I have to win. I have to be competing against okay. people. So could we call this compete and, and win? Mm -hmm. You can't compete and lose. No. That's not the goal of competition. That's not the goal of competition. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to compete and win. <laughs> yes. And if you didn't win, don't compete. Exactly. <laughs> so if you knew you weren't going to win something, don't even bother going there. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good. Which goes back to the, if I'm not perfect, I can't, don't even start. Okay, so whose definition of perfect was it though? My parents. Okay, so if we just write that down as a major heading, perfect, but it's not sort of God's definition of perfect, it's parents' definition of perfect, or society's definition of perfect, yeah? Uh-huh. Good. Okay. What else is involved in perfection for many of us? Well, feelings of low self-worth or feelings like... Well, no, no, don't be at all intellectual about it. What was the definition when you were a child of perfection? So we're saying it's the parent's definition, but what is that definition? What, what, what does it mean to be oh, perfect? It's usually what they are. Okay, so it's what they are. Or yes, I agree. what they believe is, you yep. know... So let's, if we pass the mic across to Neen. Doing what they want. So you could stay out of trouble that way. Okay, so it's really doing. Again, it's not feeling, is it? It's doing. You, don't, you, could, you can almost have a completely opposite feeling, but as long as you did what they want, you, inside you can feel like, I don't want to do what they want, what they want stupid. You can, you can have all those feelings inside yourself, but you don't voice them. You just do what they want. Because if you voice them, you get punished, you get hurt, you're no longer perfect in their eyes. So a lot of the times we had actually feelings that opposed our parents' definition, but, but we never voiced them. We always finished up doing what they want. So it's the doing what parents want, not feeling what parents want. See, most parents are not aware that when you do what they want, most of the time you don't feel what they want. <laughs> This is why, you know, the average child grows up and eventually cleans up its room, maybe, if the parents want it. And if the parents are willing to revert to violence in order for that to happen, then the child will finish up cleaning up the room. But as soon as the child goes off and lives by itself, what will it do? 
it, it, its room's a mess, right? And there's the rebellion. In other words, that they didn't feel to clean up their room. They didn't feel they wanted to. They didn't feel the tidiness and the self-esteem involved in tidiness and there, all of those kind of things. They just did what mummy and daddy wanted just to get out of feeling a whole heap of other bad things, really. And then as soon as they get out of the mum and dad's area or sphere of control, they go and do the opposite of what mum and dad wanted. And, and yet when mum and dad come to visit, what do they do? Have a big clean up, you know, everything goes back in the right place, it's all spotless then mum. And then, of course, if mum and dad rock up un uninvited, it's a, like a huge panic then, right? Because, you, because all of the things that you've been doing that you don't want them to see. Yeah. What else is the definition of parents' definition of perfect? Thanks, Ron. Don't make them feel things that they don't want to feel. Don't? Sorry, say that again. Make them for... feel what they don't want to feel. Okay, so, so in other words... Only make them feel good, right. basically. Make them it? feel good. Make them feel Definitely. good. Definitely. Yeah. So perfect in your parents' eyes is making the parent feel good. Now, can you see already, if you just look at these two things of strength and perfection, and we're going to list quite a number, of course, of childhood beliefs, but can you see how they already impact upon your think, for thinking about God? So, for example, with perfection, if the, the goal of being perfect is to just make your parent feel good, then for most people that means that they just do what they think God wants them to do. And they don't really feel about whether God wants them to do those things or they don't really feel motivated by love to do those things. They just do it because they believe God, that's what God wants. So if God wants me to belt my child, I belt my child because it's what God wants. And inside, when you're belting your child, you don't often feel very good about it, right? But you go, oh, well, it's what God wants, so away you go and belt your child. And we do that because we feel that God is the same as our own parents. In other words, that God wants God, you to make God feel good. Does that make sense? That God wants you to make God feel good is a belief that many of us have. I reckon this sounds okay. There's occasional problems, but yeah. With regarding to the parents' definition, a lot of people then go, okay, what is God's definition of perfect? And that's what I'll be. Without feeling it, we just do it. So this is why people have attraction to religions that tell them what to do. So religion tells you, obey the Ten Commandments. So what do you do? Obey the Ten Commandments. You don't care whether half of the commandments seem pretty unfair or any of those things. You just obey the Ten Commandments. And by the way, that's a Christian statement based on the book of Exodus. Right? And, and so we obey the Ten Commandments. And when we obey the Ten Commandments, all we're trying to do is work out what God's definition of perfect is and then be that without too much other thought. Right? And many of you are still trying that on the divine love path, actually, when you're, when you're listening to divine truth. You think, oh, all I'm doing now is changing what God's definition of good is. And then I'll try to do that without feeling it, right? And what we finish up doing oftentimes when we're um, listening to new truth is we just swap the same behavior with the new truth that we've learned. Our true feelings don't really change it's just our behavior that changes does that make sense yeah, and that's frequent if you look at this part here too like agree with the pack this is very much a religious thing isn't it if you don't agree with the pack with the religious definition of what should be right or wrong what happens usually in most religions well, they do exactly the same as what the family would do to you, and that is boot you out of it or put a heap of pressure on you to reconform. That's what they do. They don't honour the fact that you're allowed to make a different choice or decision if you want to. Right? This mind over feelings is another thing that most religions are very, very favourable towards, isn't it? You know, they'll even try to convince you that love isn't a feeling, that love's actually a thought. 
in order to try to get you to believe that, you know, to love you have to have your mind dominance in place. Right? And most religions are mind dominant for that reason. Right? You look at some religions, like the Buddhist religions, faith, it is totally mind dominant. Get all of your desires and all of your feelings and all of your so-called ego out of the way and only be dominated by your mind or clearing your mind of all of these issues. Right? And, but if you look at most other religious thoughts, they're very similar to that. They just fill your mind with a whole set of beliefs uh, rather than actually work through the emotional part of things. And if you look at all religions, almost every one of them historically has gone to war with another one historically, which is an indication of the level of competition they feel towards each other. Isn't it, in the end? They're all competing for converts, and then when one set of converts gets too large, the other set want to attack them in order to bring down their numbers. And, and in fact, they'll go to whole countries and convert a whole country by force. Right. Isn't that a show of the parent's definition of strength? Right. Now, God's definition of strength is uh, almost completely opposite to that. And God's definition of perfection is almost completely opposite to that too, by the way. And we'll find as we go through these lists of what do I believe from my childhood, that God's definition of almost everything that we can come up with is almost completely opposite to what we've been brought up to believe. Right? So, so we've written down strength, perfection. What else comes to mind? So what I'm going to do is just summarise these separately. So... I'll just write them up here because we're going to revisit them from God's perspective. I better write them right. Strength and perfection. Okay. What else comes to mind when it comes to, God, to what you learned or believed as a child? You want to have a step? Jen? Yeah. Um, to add to perfection, a big one for me is um, don't make a mistake. So, so perfection is no mistakes, basically, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that can be added to the word perfection. No mistakes. This is why when I encourage you to experiment and make mistakes, you go, what? It's a crazy idea. What you want me to do instead is to tell you what to do. Right? And what that, what that does, in fact, is it creates a cult. A cult usually is led by a person who's totally willing to tell you what to do. Right? And, and this all comes from this thing that you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to feel that you have to go through your own processes of correction. What you want to do instead is to have somebody to tell you what is right and you just do it. And you don't want to even have to discover what is right for yourself. You just want someone to tell you what is right and then you do, just do it. If you, if you think it's right, of course you do it. Right? And a lot of times we automatically assume it's right because somebody who says they're in a better condition than us and says they're more connected to God and, and they look like they are, they might be just talking to spirits or whatever, but they look like they are, we go, oh, well, they must be, so I'm going to do what they say. And if they say go and have sex with 20 guys to work through a sexual issue, you go and have sex with 20 guys to work through the sexual issue. Right? And there are a lot of cults on earth that actually encourage you to go and have sex with 20 guys or girls to work through an issue. Right? It's not the best way to work through your sexual issues. In fact, it's one of the worst ways, in my opinion, to work through your sexual issues. But they'll encourage you to do it. And you do it because you're so afraid that your own opinion is a mistake before you begin. And so you start assuming that whatever is told to you is, is, is not a mistake. So that's all part of perfection. What else uh, comes to mind? 